what I you were talking about with the 40 years of Mills and Boone. And uh, okay, I like this one. Oh my God, yeah, you know, cynical me. Cynical me, like the Mills and Boone. Shock horror. Okay, so it's by Josh Wood, okay, Joss Wood, which I seem to be short for Jocelyn, okay. Your bed or mine, I picked it up for the title line. That was like, okay, okay. And it's a modern, but it's modern tempted, which is probably like modern, but probably a bit more risque, and <laughs> this definitely is, maybe this bit. Breaking her man bam. A man, oh my god. Tori Phillips has spent years looking for the one. Unfortunately, she's never been able to find the right one. When she catches her latest Mr. Wrong in flagrant with another woman, she poses a man bam. But Tori suddenly finds herself regretting her promise when a slight misjudgment finds her in the wrong bed with her new roommate. Irresistible sexy Matt. Matt knows from experience how much trouble love can cause, so he's still clear of forever. But one night with sex from Tori can't hurt. I've got so many fling. The hard decision they have to make is his bed, so it's her bed or his, right? The flat in Notting Hill, love and lust in a city that never sleeps. Okay. So set in London and it's set now, okay, it's set contemporary times. And it's quite nice to get here in because these guys live down Lancaster Road in London, which is very, very expensive. It's just by Notting Hill and honestly it's like rich, you've got to be absolutely loaded, okay, to afford basically a <clears throat> and one bedroom flat is a million. Yeah, down Lancaster Road. So and I like the fact that they also talk about like because he's from South Africa, she's from London well. She's British, so she talks about going to Hyde Park Winter Wonderland, which has actually been cancelled this year, courtesy of COVID. So, I liked it set in contemporary now London. I like the fact it's set now. And, well, it came out in 2014, okay, and this book essentially is, Tori works in basically public relations, and Matt is, if you want to compare him, he's Jay Maguire, he's a sports agent, okay. He has zero work-life balance. He's at this flat in Nelson Hill um, because it, but no one can get in touch with him. He needs some me time. Okay, he basically his mate lives there as well. It's like a group of flatmates, and they live together. And Tori's just broke up with her boyfriend because caught him with someone else. And so she's in the box room, the whole box room. And I know how that feels. I know how that feels. Right. Right. So this is Matt's point of view. Okay. And this is when Matt is not interested in Tori at all, of course. He put a fair amount of drama from his sports star clients, as the agent looking for their business side of their sporting careers was, was easy. He could negotiate deals blindfolded, but playing the role with psychologist, older brother, agony aunt, and best was emotionally draining. That's why he was renting this room in an electric flat on the fridges of Notting Hill for the duration of his stay in London. He loved his job, but there's so much to do while he was over here that he didn't want or didn't need his UK clients dropping out on him and hours of the night all day. Okay, so this guy's Jay Maguire. Help me help you. And they definitely, he's, he's, well, clients have not really dropped into this book. They're mentioned, um, but then they didn't actually physically drop in, apart from one, which is like the big kind of engagement announcement. Okay, and it's interesting because obviously Tori is at her lowest ebb. Tori is just broke up her boyfriend. And the thing is, she has a habit of going for the wrong guys okay she's in her late 20s and basically dates like a teenager knowing i think she is a hypocrite her friends are a little bit kind of arsehole issues on this bit here this bit here this is when now basically toys in the box room but she thinks that matt's away okay or thinks the bed's empty so she sneaks into the big double bed in his bedroom and he catches her okay right I could seduce him. Whoa, whoa, what? The words popped into her head and her eyes widened. Bad idea, bad idea, terrible idea. Are you nuts? He's a good looking guy. What great sex. He looked the type of knew what he was doing in the sack and a soft bed and the boy had to curl up, um, uh, curl up afterwards. So she's just been caught by this guy sleeping in his bed. Okay, he doesn't take advantage, he doesn't really kind of push it. Okay, he doesn't wake her up straight away, which I thought was, was a big move. Okay. And, um, but 
her idea of getting out of this is, well, hey, let's have sex. Now, I like this. This is a Mills and Boone novel, okay? But basically, I expect Victoria, she owns her sexuality. This is some 28-year-old goddamn version, okay? She is a fully developed career woman who is just really, really unlucky in love. And a lot of it is her own doing and her own pathetic life choices. And Matt calls her out on it as well. Oh, finally. Finally. Finally, okay? Right. So there's a bit, okay, where um, Matt and Tori are getting a bit closer, okay? And they actually have a lot in common as a couple, okay? Right. <clears throat> this bit here. Now, this is when Matt calls Tori out on this, on her, okay? Right, they're kissing, okay? They're kissing, they're getting closer. They're enjoying, yeah, enjoying the kissing, okay? Right. Matt grabbed her jaw. Tori, look at me. Tori smiled and looked up. He's textured green depths. Beautiful eyes, beautiful man. Matt gave her joy the tiniest of such shakes. He realised that her thoughts were veering off track. The question should be, whatever you think, you are enough for you. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Right. Right. She was the type that he normally avoided like the plague, far too concerned about what people thought about her and how she was perceived. Innately stylish and impeccably dressed, which he suggested she was vain and more had had self-absorbed. Mm-hmm. I was being a bit of a doormat when it came to men. I thought the tidbits that I picked up from his housemates were true. The type of girl who whoever her current boyfriend wanted her to be. And it's so, so true. She he susses her quite quickly, okay? Now, it's always interesting as well, is because now this Mills and Boo novels, okay, and let friend relationships are always this function junction. But Tori is surprised when Matt says he's got such a great relationship with his dad, and he does. His dad had to raise him, his mum died quite young. And, but she's surprised, like, oh my god, you call your dad just quite flippantly. He's like, yeah, of course I do, you know? And Tori's shocked by that because she's the heroine, okay, who's got the family drama. The parents who basically didn't love each other and also didn't love her. Oh, I did like the fact, okay, that her cousin and his partner I gave representation in the Mills and Boone. Thank you so much. Um, basically, owned a three swanky hotel, which actually belonged to the family. And as uh, even they call it, and even they, you know, mention that. I like the fact, okay, that Toy's relationships with other people are also really put into it. Right. This bit here. And I like, and this, this is so true, okay, about, because Toy goes to brunch, God bless brunch, with my friends, okay, and her housemates. Mm hmm And this bit here. Right. I hit on Matt, Toy said, in the lower conversation. He turned me down twice. Izzy found it doesn't want to sleep with you. Pfft. He not into women then. He's a critical double standards in women's novels. Yep, if no, he's not gay. The first time he refused was after um, I cried. The second time he said I was using him as some sort of way to punish Mark. Oh, that's her ex. You cry, Papa said. You never cry. Were you using him? Probably treat it inside of a lip. I don't know. I didn't seem to know anything anymore. He was incredibly attractive, so cool, calm, and collected, but so perceptible. So per per so per perceptive. Besides, he's not my type. He's hot and breathing in his naked. That's your type. Right. So, so basically, Toya spent her entire life just basically becoming what men want her to be inside of being herself. And when she stops doing that, she makes a special decision with Matt with her. Basically, say, no, I've got this man ban. I I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be for me. And she actually, her character switches. She becomes a person that she always should have been. And Matt's impressed by this. This bit is. This bit here, this is a British thing. I like the fact it's in there, okay? Because obviously, Matt is South African. Right. Right. I don't know why this line made me smile. This is when um, when I was going to sports psychology or coaching, when I was doing that, mate, when I was doing that, but as education, I make her offered a place with the English Premier League soccer team. Football. We call it football. Soccer, football, the sport play by guys who don't want to get hurt. I like, sorry, the fact that I was throwing that, I think we've all had that conversation, okay? You know, I remember someone said to me, excuse me, is there a pub nearby so we can watch soccer? And I was like, football, we London, great football. So, okay. So, they get closer, they work together on this massive deal um, regarding his client and some public um, relations. And they go to her cousin's swanky hotel, which is also the old family home, and it's absolutely gorgeous. 
And this bit here, now I like the fact that okay, the Matt is going away, he's off crying about going away. He says, let's have a fling, okay? Mm -hmm. he, they set out the rules, mm -hmm. the rules to this. And yeah, you know, you know a fling's going to lead to a true love, but still, okay? But he's up front. He's very, very up front about it. Right. And this and this bit here, this is what you're talking to her cousin Colin, okay? Right. It's not often you love, right? Or commitment. No, but it's me how I should be treated. Hmm. We've been upfront and honest. Yes, he has. So Colin said, let me see if I got this right. A fantastic looking man is offering you a fun time with no commitment for a couple of weeks and you're hesitating. Honey, what is wrong with you? Got into a relationship with the D bag after a week and it was mutated from a shower mould. Toy foot backwards on the bed. Make the decision for me, Colin, so I can blame you later. Sure, have a fling with Matt of the mighty cute ass. Blame me later. Now carry on with your own unpacking. And the fact is, Gayla Colin basically gave his, says, yeah, you go for it, because Toy was still on the, on the narring. Okay, but, but, they have, yeah, they have sex. Basically, Toy goes in there, undresses, and they have a fantastic sex. And kudos to Josh Wood, the Josh Wood. Great handle on the sex scenes, a fantastic. But this bit here, this bit here, and I like the fact okay, that this, I could not believe this. Okay, now I love the fact that Toya absolutely, even though she's crabby in relationships, she owns her sexuality. Oh, she owns it. Okay, and I could not believe I read this in the Mills and Boone. I was, yeah, right. And this is when um they are, right. Hurry up, Toy responded for gritted teeth. How do you want to do this? Matt flicked to her an impatient glance. Huh? Doggy, the afternoon delight, the sphinx. Okay. <laughs> not, not always. <laughs> it depends on your preference, but... <laughs> okay, okay. God, I, I can't even I'm on this. <laughs> Essentially, a Mills and Boone heroine in a Mills and Boone novel... Essentially said, <laughs> are you down for anal? <laughs> if this is not suitable for kids. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kudos. Kudos, okay. That that is not exclusively it's like exclusive, but it can be. It depends on the preference. Okay. So so, but of course, okay, they're getting together, they're getting close. So there's a big misunderstanding because then Matt thinks that due to people played around that Toy is seeing Poppy, which is a housemate's boyfriend, Isaac, because they're just mucking about in the kitchen having fun, okay? Right. Right. And it's interesting as well because obviously Matt's got issues with his clients and this like, Premier League footballer um, has got issues, okay? And the fact is that in her mind, Tori starts to mentally kind of date this guy. And then she's invited to like, this big event and she doesn't tell him the reason why she's been nominated for an award. And then he has to dash off to his clients. And that's, I, I like that in a way, okay? Because it's not the fact, okay, that the lead dashed off because he wasn't committed, he dashed off because he cared about someone. There you go. Right, but, but yeah, I like that in a way, okay? Because what can really Toy say? How dare you not be there for me, Matt? We're not dating. And I needed you, even though I didn't do and your client knew you do more. Here you go. So, right. But eventually, Matt goes back off to South Africa. Tori is broken hearted. And of course, and of course, and of course. And this is, I, and I just imagined, now obviously, she just made this revelation at home, but if this was this was a book, especially around Notting Hill, she'd be walking through the park. It'd be autumn, because it always is in these kind of things, okay? Leaves would be falling, and they do a lot of that in Hyde Park, okay? It'd be quite like a misty day. She'd be walking, hands in her pocket, and suddenly she'd get the epiphany. Right. I need more, Troy decided. I need more than a part-time man who's tense to have to fight for. 
I need more than a good sex and laughs. I want commitment and hope and possibilities. Matt had his sex drive, but with his drive to serve his clients and issues around love and commitment was not going to give that to me. Hadn't he perfectly demonstrated it earlier? Okay. I mean, he was flipping the hell out of her. There's mobile rang and the switch flipped and he was gone mostly physically, emotionally. It felt inconsequential, unimportant. And while she knew that it was temporary things, she felt used. No longer liked feeling used. Now, the thing is, is this. Now, she may not like what Matt did, but the fact that she signed up for it, and then she actually fell for him. Okay, the onus is on her. But the fact is that Matt's given her a revelation, in a way. Okay, he treated her, when it was good, how she should be treated. And he made her wake up to the fact that he needs to cut. She's the one who's actually emotionally mature in their relationships. And, yes, they get back together, come back from South Africa. He meets the daddy, and she actually goes off to South Africa. And they start working on the future together. And to be honest, I generally did like this novel. I, obviously, it's got the Mills and Boone formula, if you will. I like the fact that, okay, yes, even though, okay, it was like the camping this outlook, it did have, for once, in the Mills and Boone novel, a bit of LGBTQ, actually, LGBTQ plus diversity, sorry. Um, I, with the cousin Colin, and I like the fact that, okay, this felt so real. This felt like a situation on the nail. This is about a professional woman who can't afford her own flat, she's got me back in with her housemates, which she does basically on and off. This felt real, and this felt London to me. And I haven't really got into my um, capsule that often, so, since lockdown started. So, I liked this book. I was impressed by it, and I was so impressed by Mills and Boone heroine, who absolutely owned her own sexuality. Wasn't a 28-year-old virgin. She knew exactly what she wanted, and I love that. So, Joss... Joss, sorry, would your bed or mine? Modern tempted, I recommend it read. Okay. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Mademoiselle Wood. You impressed me. It's not easy to do sometimes when it comes to Mills and Boone. Sign off. Bye now.